Hi, I'm Monica. If you stay with me, over the next few minutes I'm going to show you how to add a calendar module to your OpenZava application. We'll do it in the application you're seeing, a simple project management application. But the steps we're going to take to create a calendar module can be followed with any of your OpenZava applications, no matter what they are. The best part is that we already have a calendar without doing anything, because any module that contains a date automatically has a calendar available. Let's see it by going to Issues. Notice that there's a date created on. That's why, when we go to List Mode, we have an icon available to activate the calendar. If we click on a day, for example the 14th, it creates a new issue. If we scroll down and look at the creation date, it's the 14th. It uses the value of the day we clicked on for the date. When we go up and open the type drop-down, we find feature and bug. If we want to use this to plan events or tasks, maybe we can create a new type, like event, scheduled task, or simply task. Let's do that. It would also be a good idea to keep created on as the creation date and add a new date field to indicate the date the task is scheduled for. Let's do that. For that, we need to edit the code. So let's go to the IDE. In our project, which is called Projects, we open the model package, and there, we open the issue class. We scroll down until we find the create on date. And just above it, we add a new date property called plan for. For it to appear in the user interface, we also have to add it to the view annotation. Let's scroll up and add it to the last line of the details group, for example. Let's go to the browser to see how it looks. Now we have a drop down to choose the date field to be used by the calendar. We click on the 19th. We scroll down to check the dates and see that the creation date has today's date, and the planning date has been set to the 19th. Let's create the task. We type a title. Choose task as the type. And then click save. We go back to the list, and in the calendar, on the 19th, our task appears. Notice that I created this task with the user admin. What would happen if I created another task with a different user? Let's see. I'm logging in as Monica, and when I enter, I see the task from admin. I click on the 13th to create a new task as Monica. I type a title. Choose task as the type. Click save. And return to the list. And I see that both tasks are in the calendar, the one from admin and mine when what I would really like is to see only my task, not everyone's tasks for May. Actually, this is not hard to achieve, without needing to code, thanks to OpenZava's ability to create and save filters. Let's see how. We choose the list format, which is where we can filter. In the created by column, I type my name. I filter and click on save query. I give the query a name, my tasks. Save. Then we go back to the calendar and now, yes, I only see my tasks, I no longer see admins. With the drop down, I can choose to show all tasks or just mine. From the calendar, I can't create queries, but I can select the ones I've already created. We've seen how our users can create a personal calendar from any module that has a date, without us having to do any special programming. This is something OpenZava offers by default. However, this approach has two major drawbacks. The first is that our user needs to be a skilled one, because they need to realize there's a calendar mode, know that a query can be saved with a name, and understand that this query can be selected in the calendar. This is for advanced users. The second drawback is that even for advanced users, it's a tedious workflow, because to access the calendar you have to go to the Issues module, choose the calendar, and then select the My Tasks query. Too many clicks if using the calendar is something frequent. We must admit that most users only use what's ready to go, no configuration, just a single click. That's why we're going to create a module called My Calendar, which directly shows my tasks with a single click and without needing to configure anything. Let's go back to the IDE to do it. 
To add the new module, we'll edit the application.xml file. We go to the end, copy the sample declaration for a module, and paste it. We'll call the module my calendar. For the model, we use issue. For the controller, CRUD, so we can create, edit, and delete issues. And now comes the key part, the tab. We're going to use a special tab within issue called My Calendar. This tab will make only the calendar appear in the list and filter the issues by the logged in user. To create the My Calendar tab, we'll edit the issue entity, where we add a tab annotation at the class level. We name it My Calendar, the same name we used in the module definition. Now comes the special part. Using the editor's attribute, we specify that the only available editor will be calendar. This means that in list mode, we'll only have the calendar. There will be no list, no cards, no charts. Just the calendar. Next, we specify that the property to be displayed as events in the calendar should be the issue's title. And now the other important thing, the condition. We want it to only show those issues whose creator, in the created by property, is the current user. As the value, we use a question mark. This question mark is filled with whatever the filter returns. As the filter, we use one included in OpenZava called user filter, which returns the name of the logged in user. That's it. Let's see how our My Calendar module looks. In the module list, we have a new module, My Calendar. If we click on it, we see a calendar. Notice that only my tasks appear, even though I have everyone selected in the condition. Also, note how there are no longer icons to choose the list, graphs or cards. It's quite good, it's what we wanted. Although there are still some details we can polish. For example, what happens if we enter the calendar when there are no records yet? Let's try it. We click on the only task we have to delete it. We press delete and return to the list. The calendar is now empty. Using the menu, we go to the My Calendar module and find that it doesn't show us any calendar. This behavior is normal in OpenZava. If there are no records, it directly executes the new action to allow creating new entries. In most cases, this is reasonable, but in the case of a calendar, it's a bit odd that we click on a calendar and don't see one. To fix this, we'll write our own new action so that when entering the module for the first time, it always goes to list mode. To do this, we create a new class in the actions package, which we'll call new issue from my calendar action. We make it extend new action. We add a boolean attribute called goal list, which we'll use to indicate when we need to go to the list and when to go to the detail view. By default, it will be false. Next, we implement execute, which by default calls super.execute. We're going to add a condition first to check if it's the first time entering the module. Since this isn't a common query, there's no direct method to check, but with this simple trick, checking the value of the first request parameter, we can determine it. If it's the first time, we set goal list to true and do nothing else. The final step is to implement the getNextMode method. Here we use the boolean attribute goal list, which according to the logic we've written will only be true the first time the module is entered. Therefore, if it's true, we return list. Otherwise detail. In summary, our new action does the same as the standard new action, except that the first time the module is entered, it does nothing and goes directly to list mode, that is, to the calendar. We copy the action name with Control C. Now we'll go to controllers.xml to register the action. We paste the action name to keep it handy. We don't have a My Calendar controller yet, let's create it. We'll do this by copying the example controller. We'll name it my calendar, of course. Instead of extending from typical, we'll extend from crud, which is more than enough for the calendar. The example controller's action happens to be new, what luck. 
We paste our class name for the action. We copy the action package from another controller action. And paste it here. Done. Finally, let's change the module definition. In application.xml, in the MyCalendar module, we change the CRUD controller to MyCalendar. That's everything, let's test it. Notice how I have no records. Now I click on the MyCalendar module and go directly to the calendar. Done. But there's still another detail we can polish. Let me show you. May 25th is a good day to go to the beach. I'm going to note it down. I select the type, task. And I click save. What happens? Instead of returning to the calendar, the form stays ready to create another task. This is normal in a module designed for entering many records, but it's not what we expect in a calendar, where the most natural behavior would be to add an event and return to the calendar view. Modifying this behavior is very easy, we just need to create our own save action. Let's do it. We'll create a new action called save returning to list action. That will extend save action. In this case, the only thing we'll override is the get next mode method to return to list mode when finished, unless there are validation errors when saving. We just need to add our custom save action to our My Calendar controller in controllers.xml. After this, we can test it. We click on a day. We enter our task name. The type. Save. We can see how after saving it returns to the calendar. This already works quite well. As the finishing touch, we'll remove the unnecessary combo boxes. Like the filter combo box, the date field selector, and the grouping one. These don't make sense in a personal calendar. The simplest way to hide any element in an open Zava application is using CSS. And that's what we'll do to hide these combo boxes. We open the custom.css file. We go to the end of the file and using the module prefix followed by the class of the element to hide, we add two rules to hide the combo boxes and an extra one to add some top margin. And here we have the calendar without the combo boxes, which also always opens in calendar mode, no list mode, no charts, no cards, returns to the calendar after saving, and filters by tasks created by me. In short, a perfect calendar module. In the video description, we'll include a link to an article in OpenZava's documentation where you'll find all the code snippets we've written in this tutorial. However, there's a faster way to get the source code, by creating a project using the project management template. In OpenZava Studio, use the new OpenZava project option. There, select project management as the template. The created project will include a calendar module called My Calendar, very similar to what we've created in this tutorial, but with two important improvements. The first is that in the action to create a new task or calendar event, it takes the opportunity to set default values for some task fields. The other improvement is that the filter doesn't filter records by task creator but by the worker assigned to the tasks. This allows a manager to create tasks and assign them to a worker, and that worker can see them in their calendar. If you've made it this far following the steps, you now have your calendar. Congratulations. If not, we encourage you to create a project using the project management template or the corresponding Maven archetype, try it out, and examine the code. If you have any issues with the video, don't hesitate to ask us in the forum. Bye.